Dr. Ted Naiman, for weightlifters and serious athletes, how to manage carbs and fasting. Now, if you look at it through an evolutionary lens, it really makes sense to have some sort of, you know, metabolic winter time where, you, you know, your, your environment's pretty low in energy, maybe low in carbs and fats and your protein percent's really high. And then other times where you do have higher energy intakes. So I'm, I'm kind of all in on some sort of cyclical approach, but I do think it's, it's good to be in ketosis on a, at least a cyclical basis. I think it just makes sense for metabolic flexibility to kind of go in and out of this ketosis. Ketosis. When carbohydrates and insulin are low, ketones become the major energy source. Your metabolism becomes a fat burner, and this can lead to reduction of body fat. Just basically, you want your body to be able to survive if you're in a low energy environment, which is probably every winter time for you know most of our hunter gatherer ancestors. And uh, really, the only way to do that is to enter ketosis and also manufacture all your own glucose, mostly from protein. And so it makes sense to have practice doing those things and to be good at it. The reality is your, your liver is constantly making all the glucose you ever need um, via gluconeogenesis, whether you're eating carbs or not. So behind the scenes, your liver is just pumping out enough glucose to keep you alive at all times. It's mostly making this from either the glycerol backbone of triglycerides from your stored fat or dietary fat or from amino acids or from lactic acid if you're exercising. But, but eventually a lot of this glucose is coming from protein and your body is converting it into glucose and you are making enough to keep yourself alive at all times. Gluconeogenesis is happening 100% of the time in everyone all the time whether they're eating carbs or not. And then um, if you eat extra protein, you're not converting that into glucose. Your, your body deaminates the protein. You strip the nitrogen group off the amino acids, and then you oxidize the carbon skeletons in your mitochondria just the same way you'd burn any other substrate. So you really don't have to be afraid of eating extra protein. It's not going to raise your blood sugar. And, uh, and you really don't have to be afraid of gluconeogenesis because it's really happening 100% of the time anyway. You're just unaware of it. We could, you know, dump a thousand calories of protein on top of your diet right now and your blood sugar very well might not go up even a single point. There's absolutely nothing wrong with carbs and fats together if you're isocaloric or hypocaloric. Um, the only problem with carbs and fats together is the palatability and the addictive nature because it spikes dopamine so high in some people. <laughs> so if you have any addictive chemistry, that donut's going to light up your brain quite a bit and just drive overeating. And that's really the only thing I'm worried about there. This applies to animal fat. Vegetable oil is highly inflammable. I don't do a lot of extended fasting. I, I mean, personally, I never fast over 24 hours. Okay. I usually don't recommend fasting over 24 hours. Honestly, I think a 16-8 sort of lean gains protocol is the sweet spot for most people. Okay. That's basically what I'm doing. And I actually don't tell people to force themselves to uh, intermittently fast. I don't want anyone to be starving and hungry and looking at the clock and trying to push a meal out a couple hours. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what I do find is that if you're eating high satiety foods and you're well um, fat adapted, if you're good at living off of stored body fat and you're good at manufacturing your own glucose and you're comfortable in this sort of low energy environment, then you naturally just sort of slip into a two meal a day, 16, eight kind of thing effortlessly. And that's what I want people to do. I want them to be eating such a high protein diet, such a high satiety diet and be so well fat adapted that they just naturally slip into this 16, eight, two meal a day gig. Summary, it's good to be in ketosis on a cyclical basis. When in ketosis, you manufacture all your glucose. The liver is making all needed glucose through gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is happening 100% of the time. Extra protein is oxidized.
and it will not raise blood sugar. Eating carbs is not needed to gain glucose. If not overweight, there is no serious problem with eating carbs and fat together, except it's highly addictive for some people. This applies to animal fat. Vegetable oil is highly inflammable. Ted Naiman recommends 16 hours a day in a fasting state and having an 8-hour eating window. If eating high protein and high satiety foods, you may naturally slip into a two meal a day routine effortlessly.